This is Chris Custer from MyCannabisRadio.com, and we're talking with one of the, how do I say this, goers of, they, they started the Operation Cannabis 420 movement um, with Anonymous. Uh, I'm not going to give any names right now, but if you want to, you can tell us who you are and tell us all about everything. Uh, yes, I'm Enon, um, and I'm on a, I'm a member of a Team Vendetta, which is uh, working on this uh, Operation Cannabis 420, and we are um, we are kind of responsible for for getting as much media and information out there as we possibly can before uh, we start setting up on 420. Right, and exactly what are what is the operation going to be, or can you tell us? Uh, some details about the operation so that that the people can get out there and join you know that's what anonymous is all about is uh, getting people to join and helping out so what can people do to help operation cannabis 420 uh mainly um the most anybody can do is i mean well not the most but what's important to do is just educate people on the benefits of it um but what we what we do, we really can't, we really don't want to disclose early, you know. Um, but what, what we're figuring is that, that the, it'll, it'll start more of an anon movement um, toward helping this legalization effort. And anons are really good at thinking outside the box. So it's definitely going to be something different and original. Um, that you're not used to seeing in, in, in the 420 world. Right, right. Um, something that I was, I was just thinking about today, There, I saw a post uh, on, on Coney 2012. Of course, we all know right. about this. Right. Kind of a, well, it's not kind of, it is a scam. It's a big scam, um, in my opinion, anyways. Um, and so one of the things I was thinking about we should do on 420 uh, is a, like a little direct action Um Put up posters of Mark Emery. Make it Emery 2012 and not Coney 2012. If you see a poster yeah. of Coney, put up a poster of Mark Emery. Anywhere, put a poster of Mark Emery up and and get the message out about him and why he's in prison for a seed. Not even a plant. Yeah, not even a plant. I'm sorry, I've got uh, Reverend Patrick Patridge, uh, Patrick pa Patrick Partridge <laughs> from Green Faith Ministries. He's also sitting with me here. Um, he's with uh, Brandon, Reverend Brandon Baker as well with Green Faith Ministries. You can find them on Facebook. Yeah, they, we've got the Cannabis Fe uh, Revival Film Festival coming up all next week at uh, here in Denver. They're going to be showing uh, Rick Simpson's Run for the Cure, The Union. Um, yeah, the cannabis, the vitamin C, super high me, all these, you know, educational cannabis films uh, coming up here in Denver this week. Um, so that's who I've got here with me. I'll put them on microphone if you don't mind. Howdy. <laughs> you still there, Yunan? Yes, I'm still here. Okay. You got me in the pot too deep. Oh, yeah. There, there we go. go. There we go. How you doing, brother? I'm doing just fine. Wonderful. We're here all fighting for the cause, brother. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, interesting uh, that you, you kind of brought up Coney 2012 as a scam because uh, Anonymous actually within hours of uh, that being put out, the video being released, um, Anon within hours went to doxing and investigating this and produced a video and told everybody exactly what it was. Right, right. And, I probably and, saw and that's probably where I got my information from. <laughs> right. There was literally 13,000 views when uh, Coney was at the uh, 50 million view mark. There was only 13,000 views on, of the uh, Anon video, which explained everything in detail. Right. We had doxed him, uh, death certificate, everything. You know? Right, right. And it and it was all posted online, but but um, it, it just didn't get the attention. Well, no, because people were too wrapped up in all this other well, I, um, media 
media bullshit, basically. Well, I, I, I got sucked in, and then a friend of mine showed me you guys' uh, video, and what I did is I posted both of mine on my timeline, which the way I see it is I'm neutral because I'm not over there getting oppressed by either him or the government, but I think both sides of the story needs to be told. So thank you guys for giving the rebuttal. Uh, yeah, we just we kind of wanted to get the information out there uh, before a lot of people got really disappointed. But like I said, it uh, they they pretty much stole the story on that. Right. But uh, Anon is really good at, at, at information and information sharing. Right. Um, the video we just made. Within the first four days, we had over 20,000 hits, and we just basically released it in the anonymous community. Now what we're wanting to do is take that over into the 420 community and right. start getting support from 420 uh, people. And uh, so far, they've been a little slow to respond, but momentum is building. Yeah, and we, we have, you know, you have some good support so far going. You got... Uh, We've got Green Faith Ministries. You've got iCannabis Radio. Uh, you've got Steve Elliott from Toka the Town that's behind you guys. Um, and so many more are seeing this video. Where I'm sharing it all the time, trying to. Uh, people are, are talking about, have talked about it in our circle here. Um, so, yeah, the message is definitely getting out there with uh, this. Um, we're looking forward to seeing what the actual op is going to be I, I, a lot of it is just information sharing though i i'm i'm, I'm guessing it's yes, just getting the word what out there we're hoping to do is is start um more of a movement so that it can take a life of its own any any good operation will suddenly take on a life of its own once right. people see that it's it's good and the collective gets behind it and we want to start with some out-of-the-box examples. We and once we start this precedent, people will want to, to one-up us, so to speak. So okay. it, it'll take on a while. I, I think uh, you got some competition here in Denver. I think we can one-up some people. Well, we always like to say that, you know, outside the box thinking is the way it's going to happen. Um so what you guys what you guys have started is exactly the the idea between behind cannabis revival film festival um it's thinking outside the box and it's time that this plant gets revived for the history of the of the country that it did i mean it's insane that the silly plant is is uh is forbidden if you will yeah, um, well, the, the reason we're, we're trying to think outside the box is because uh, we want to make this movement move even faster than it already is, the legalization effort. Right. So by thinking outside the box, we hope to avoid preaching to the choir. Right, yeah, you need to reach the new people like well and just like the the guys over at green faith are doing um they reached out to all of our legislators here in colorado they they went and give gave a ticket to each one individually and so we are hopefully bringing all these you know politicians from our our state capital into our realm with us in the cannabis world and we want to educate them you know the truths about cannabis not these not this propaganda that, that has been fed to them for 70 years 80 years kind of the way we look at it in on is we we do ballot initiatives and we get them we get great turnout we get things passed but then we ask these legislators to implement these laws and they, they're still with the reefer madness mentality because of what they've been taught by the lobbyists yeah they, they get the lobbyists are paid to make them just say that marijuana is not a medicine cannabis is not a medicine absolutely they, clearly one of the oldest medicines there is you know? well yeah i mean there's they haven't written it out of the our memories that it was in the pharmacopoeia for thousands of years but now the new one they put out not a, not a word of it. Yeah, it's all chemicals and compounds and and, and those other things. Yeah. And what we're finding is is what, what we're seeing a lot of is is the people will vote it in and they'll get the initiatives passed and it'll go as far as the state 
and then the government will put in, come in and put pressure on the state, and uh, and then it becomes a, a, a state versus Fed thing, and and then it basically, you know, who's the bigger man here? See, and the, uh, I, the medical marijuana community suffers for it. The way we look at it is. We think the way we're, the reason we're safe kind of in Colorado is because we did implement it into our constitution. And this the federal government is not ready to withstand that that fight yet. Um, we did something right in the beginning of when they voted it in, but when we get legislators implementing laws that they know nothing about the patients that it's helping or anything like that as there again they've been taught by lobbyists um, so now what we're doing, what we're finding out is we're asking them to implement laws and they know th nothing about them. So what we're saying is let's educate them. It's upon us to educate them, give them the opportunity to learn. And then if they refuse to learn, then we take action in the voting box. You know, well, we remove them from where they are. Basically, you're holding them accountable. Absolutely. Right. And that's okay. what we need to do all across the board. State do you guys, and federal. Do you guys mind if I ask y'all a question? Yeah, go ahead. Um, this will actually help us, but what we've been seeing and running across, and, and we run across this in Anonymous all the time. We have teams fighting teams, Anon versus Anon fighting. Yeah. But what we've noticed is a big separation and a, a kind of a battle what we see going on between the medic, the people that want the, the cannabis plant legalized for medical purposes, and then those that want it fully legal for everybody, um, well, is 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 that what you guys? I mean, do y'all run across that? Is well, that as big of a factor as we're seeing? I, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let uh, Patrick talk, and then I'm gonna give my view on it after him. What we found with that particular instance is. You know, we find that, and that's part of the confusion that hemp is different than cannabis or vice versa. Um, what they don't realize, it's a male seed plant that we use for fibrous and, and other things. And then the flowers of the female we use for medicine. It's all the same plant, folks. And, and that's part of the confusion in the fight that's within us. And, and we have a, we've adopted a message at Green Faith as we need one voice with one message to accomplish one goal and if we can do that because right now we sound like a bunch of barking dogs out of tune and eventually you tune that out if you continue to hear that dog barking outside your, your neighbor's dog you end up figuring out how to tune that out well what I say is how can they refuse us if we're all speaking in chorus and we're all saying the same thing we want it re-legalized no matter what, it's re-legalized the cannabis hemp plant, period. It's, it's not about fighting of, of industrial hemp or cannabis as medicine. One message, one voice, one goal. And, and let's stop the infighting because that's what they want, whoever they are. You know, it, it seems like to be a barrel of monkeys when you get into who's fighting to keep this illegal. Um, you, you get through one issue and one lobbyist and then next what there's another door of another lobbyist that you got to jump through it's amazing the, the fight in the many different industries that this one single plan has caused the fight with I'm sorry I'm taking over here go ahead no, sir no that was, uh, that was pretty much about what I was going to say we need to there, I see the, the infighting I've been part of the infighting um but it needs to stop. It is a medicine, but it's a medicine for everyone. It's a medicine for everyone to the use. The tree of life. The tree of life. It is truly the tree of life and the tree of knowledge. In my personal belief and opinion and how, what it's done in my life. It's given me knowledge and it's given me life. It's given my life back. And it, I think everybody should be able to use it no matter what. And the, the infighting does need to stop because we're all on one, supposedly we're all on one common goal to get this plant freed, to get everyone freed who is imprisoned for this plant, for individual liberties, for your right as a human being to have a medicine. That's, that's what we all should be going as for common goal as <coughs> 
as a human society, I believe. I kind of look at it like it's a preventive as well as it is a medicine to treat. If you have, you know, there's, there's studies that's coming out from reputable universities that is saying that this plant, and, and they're finding because of environmental toxicities and lack of cannabinoids in our body, cannabinoid deficiencies is why we're getting sick. So what's to say we're not supposed to take a little bit of it every day, like a vitamin that they've convinced us to take? I don't know. You figure it out. I find more people healthier that uses it than that, that don't. <laughs> what we're finding out uh, a lot is who exactly is uh, uh, oppressing you guys. Um, that's been an interesting journey in itself. And part of the operation, you know, you, um, most of it is information sharing and education. But we hope to throw a little twist into that that'll spurn the movement on a little bit more. We're, we're by no way claiming we're going to make this legal no matter what or anything. We're just simply here to help right. because we realize that it is something that is for the betterment of all of mankind. All of mankind, so. yeah. Uh, there, there's so many benefits from the food aspect, the health aspect, to fuel and energy sources, homes. You can make homes out of hemp. Um, may, let me ask you a question. May I use your uh, YouTube video for opening of the Cannabis Revival Film Festival every evening? Uh, you can do whatever you want to. We uh, just right released on. a new video today. Uh, we'll be re releasing one every few days, updating people. Um, but but yes, feel free to use anything on any site. On um, you know that that's uh, uh, um, for the operation cannabis for twenty. Uh, feel free. Thank you. Right on, right on. Um, thank you very much, Enon. Uh, this has been a really. Do you have anything else you'd like to add? Only that uh, we're we're about ready to to let the lulls games begin here. <laughs> um, we uh, we really do see how how y'all are oppressed, and like I said, when uh, the the op came out, it was basically because uh, cannabis fit the criteria that Anonymous likes to back, and and that is the the, the betterment of the world. Right. And with all that we see that it can replace. Um, it's just, it's not smart for us not to, to do this. How can we have a functioning society when, when we're just letting something like this be, be ruled upon by, by a select few? Right, and yeah, I, I really don't know what else to say except for it's, I think it's, it's very awesome that Anonymous has decided to take up this cause. Um, well, what what we what we really need from out there, from the, the the 420 community, and what we've been trying to do for the, it's only been a few days since we released the op, right. um, and so far we we we've, we've garnered all the anonymous support. You know that, that well, uh, out of uh, all those thousands of views, we only had six dislikes um, <laughs> out of all of those, and that's just incredible for They're any tweakers. video. Yeah, yeah. And um, so, what we need is is for the the 420 people to start, you know, just supporting us, um, getting our messages out, so we can help you guys. You right. Because we're we're learning um, about this every day, and and, and it's evolving well, on our end. And the how deep how deep down the rat hole are you willing to dive, or the rabbit hole, should I say? Are you willing to dive it into it? Because it ain't something you're going to want to slip off into feet first. You're going to have to dive into it because I tell you, I've been studying it for a long time, brother. And every time I get think I get enough knowledge to figure it out, here comes another lobbyist out of the corner. Well, one of the reasons I was actually uh, picked on this team and for this op was uh, because of uh, my ties with the, the 420 community. So I, I go back to the 80s with, uh, with normal um, so I've, I've been involved um, television show in Austin back in the early 90s, uh, um, head of, of the old Texas normal there in Austin behind Planet K. Um, 
back when there was only one chapter. Of course, this is like 54 chapters down there now, you know, in the state. But uh, I've I've been around the movement a long time, so and and they knew that, so they they picked a few of us like that. There's a, there's a few of the anons that that you know were, were kind of specialized in this, so they 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 kind of got us together in a group, right? And we put and 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 we we've got a nice little group going, a nice mixture um, to to help you guys, and and um, we're we're putting in hours. I mean. All night long, uh, we're giving it our all, and and like I said, we we want to bring some fresh air to this movement. You know, if we we can, we, right. we're trying. And and anonymous has been very successful with lots of movements, and that's that's why I'm really pleased to see see them jumping on board with this. Um, right, I I came out uh, like when anonymous decided to support uh, OWS. Right. Um, we we set up live streams and 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 and, and help you know get OWS. You know we were a strong factor and a force in that. And right. usually we find that 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 politicians and big corporations that they usually know that we're on the righteous side. So it does seem like we, there is a lot of influence uh, because they know that it's anonymous is. Uh, one of the, the latest but truest democracies there is as a collective. You know, it's right. Um, yeah, just just think, talking about all this gives me some ideas that I'm going to have to tell you off air. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, this is a very this uh, this 420. Uh, it just seems like it's bigger than any other one that there has ever been. You know, some people would like to say that. The you know they they were guessing that the end was at two twelve or twenty twelve. I kind of want to believe it's a spiritual awakening, an evolution that that we all wake up finally from being dumbed down sheep. I hate to use that on my own people that word, but it's true. It, it it's so very true that we're so addicted to what. Snooky did on the Jersey Shore than what's really going on in the ballot booth or or in these caucuses and this so-called Republican whatever farce that they've got going on. I don't know. I'm a I come from a political science background and it makes me want to throw up. But I'm sorry. I I just it's it what you're talking about is just making me sick. But go ahead. You're you're on the right track though. It's time. <laughs> It's time to wake these folks up. Yeah, and what we like I said, we want to uh, breathe a little bit of fresh air into the movement if we can, and we're going to bring our our own way of doing things. We're going to bring the movement into the technology world. Uh, we're, um, yeah. like I said, hoping to create some 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 smiles and uh, and bring you guys some happiness. That's good because there needs to be a lot more smiles and happiness. Uh, brought around to the world there's um, a very famous uh, anonymous picture that you might have seen uh, during the OWS era uh, where the anonymous guy is holding up the sign uh, instead of us saying the end is near it says the beginning is near yeah yeah. and yeah, that's yeah, what the right made me think of I think I, think I actually uh, made one of those signs as well at Occupy Denver yeah. a couple of my friends made that sign it was a very popular sign because it's true. The, the beginning is near. Um, I I I feel that way that the the beginning is is coming. The beginning of a spiritual awakening, a beginning of a new consciousness of, for the for the world. Um, I have a friend of mine, and um, I I use his first name. His name's Todd, and um, I'm sure you're familiar with the incident that happened in Oakland here a week ago or last week. Two weeks ago at Oaksterdam. Yes. Um, well, I don't want to go into it too deep, but this man has lived through a lot, and his home was one of the ones raided. And uh, the only thing they did—they didn't even handcuff him. 
Um, they come in, they scalped him of his plants and his lights, and they told him, don't worry about it. And you know what he told me it felt like? He said it must have felt like those, those moonshine runners toward the end of alcohol prohibition when they used to just come in and knock over the steel and knock over all the liquor and leave because they knew there wasn't going to be no prosecution, prosecution behind it. And right. he said it was. He said it was like none other, none other bust or raid that he's ever experienced. He said although they had AR-15s, they weren't aggressive with them. I was like, wow, that's pretty interesting. Well, we we all seen the. We were all online, and we seen it, you know, as it went down. And we can sit there and see the guys smiling. And yet the story's popping up of right across town, tragedy happening. Yeah, well, and, and I, will, where, you know, I do got to give the Oakland. I do got to give the Oakland police uh, a pat on the back. They finally got tired of uh, when when that started occurring. They did leave, and the only reason they were on site because they had no idea that the feds were going to do those raids. They were called later to do crowd control for the feds. And when that was occurring, they told the feds, you're on your own. You either got to wrap this up or you're going to have to run your own crowd control because we got real emergencies going on. Yeah. And and I do got to applaud the Oakland Police Department yeah, for that. Yeah, there was a real tragedy that happened exactly. that day, just to like and, not and very they, far away. They did leave and do their job, unlike those guys with automatic weapons that maybe could have stopped at least one person from getting one extra bullet. Who knows? Right, and that just shows you how uh, they are actually human. Um, they, they're there to protect and serve, and, um, and most of them try to do that to the best of their abilities. Absolutely, but, they're a necessary evil. I, that's the way I look at it. Because without them, we have chaos. Uh, and, they just need a the the way they're trained these days. Absolutely, and the way that they're, they're allowed to have the mentalities that they have the the bully mentalities, the badge and a gun. I can rule over you. Yeah, I can get I, away. I, with I this can ignore the can. oath to the Constitution that I took. <laughs> you know. That kind of mentality needs to stop within the police force. Well, there are good police officers and... out there. I went on a rant back in December uh, on George's show um, because of police brutality that I experienced firsthand. My friends I experienced through Occupy Denver. My aunt is on is part of a sheriff's department in another state, and My you know, was a cop for ten years. Yeah, so. you know, so I know that there are good police officers out there that do mean well, but there's a whole another side to absolutely everything. But you got to look at the age of these kids that are coming out of these colleges with these associate degrees that are criminal justice degrees. And they're getting hired uh, by these police departments, and they're trained in college to be cocky, to be aggressive. Mm -hmm. and, and when all actuality, all they need to do is treat us like human beings that we are. Yeah. If we have That's broken, why we get mad. If we have broken our laws, because we are the society that puts those laws into place, and we are the, th the society that gives them the authority to protect and to serve those laws. Or, you know, to to defend those laws, if nothing else, we wish they would. Because they're they we find that they pick and choose the ones they want. We got we got literally robbed without a gun by Wall Street and that was okay. Not one of them has done perp walks. Yeah. Um what's wrong with this picture in this society today? Um, we, we know there's blatant corruption going on. We've exposed it. You guys. And then, uh, yeah, you guys. <laughs> you guys it. have exposed tremendous amounts. Thank you again, by the way. But, um, and not one have we seen perp walks. They used to brag about the perp walks. It was amazing how not three, four years ago, they were bragging about who they would get out there on the perp walk. And now, not so much. <laughs> I don't know. And, and, coming back to something else you know we got the big industry with wall street part of the cannabis problem is big pharma big pharma and the doctors the doctors are not taking their hippocratic oath seriously just like the police are not taking their oath to the constitution seriously okay, chris but you also once you get through that lobbyist uh, predicament there then you're going to have the plastics industry. Then you're going to have the petroleum mm -hmm. industry. Then you're going to have the timber industry. Because these are all lobbyists we have to face. And and like I told him, my friend there, you're getting into, you get, you, 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 the best way to do it is dive into the rabbit hole. 
Don't just jump in feet first because the first the first four or five you're going to see, they're smoke screens. It goes far deeper than the ones I've mentioned and probably some that I probably shouldn't mention, but I won't because I love my uh, freedom in my life. But um, I've been I've been studying this rabbit hole for a long time, and I thank you guys for joining me down here. But I, I find it amazing that that uh, a plant that can do so many things is still despised as the devil weed in every organized religious church we walk around. I I just don't understand it. It feeds us. It clothes us. It, it it can build our cars. As a matter of fact, it can run our cars. But yet, it can still cure these other diseases. I mean, yeah, oaths. Um, they they just uh, like like you said. Uh, people are too quick to say yes to an oath anymore. Um, lawyers. I mean, doctors. You know, medical community. Um, all those oaths just don't seem to hold weight anymore. And and the other point was, you know, the police are, are there to serve society. They're not there to control society. Right. So true. Well, you know, and I, I think we got to go here soon. Um, I'm going to be sharing this video. Uh, can you give us the website? Oh, our, our uh, uh, press release page, or, or yeah, yeah, uh, we have we have a, a press uh, release page that is on uh, WordPress. Um, it is, uh, um, um, let's see, it was a anonymous one anonymous legion WordPress dot com. Okay. Are two guys the, also the ones on Facebook of Occupy with Cannabis? Uh, yes, there is an Occupy Cannabis that, that, that we do go into and, and visit, and that, that's where we, we get a lot of our information off social sites um, and then start investigating it and going deeper from there. But uh, a lot of what, what we start with does come from social sites, and, and we have been through there. I've, I've posted a video on there before, so uh, dig, dig I, I've Rick seen the Occupy with Cannabis. Dick Rick, dig up Rick Simpson in, in Cannabis Science Incorporated and Bob Melamed and look at the amazing work they're doing and the people yeah, so they're I, saving I, their I, lives. I, 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 and, uh, Rick uh, is, uh, if I could give out Nobel Peace Prizes, yes, he would sir. be the first one I Him could Him and Bradley give, Manning, sir. <laughs> Him and Bradley Manning would be the first ones in line. I mean, hell, the guy that created Nobel uh, invented dynamite. And then uh, our, pre our current president um, given the Nobel Peace Prize, and he's just a warmonger himself. So if, if those guys can get the prize, uh, why can't these two? Yeah. <laughs> so. All right, Enon, we got to go. Much, Thank you, you, man. Have a great afternoon. Enjoy your weekend, and I can't wait to uh, – be uh, inspired more by what you guys are going to do. Okay, and I thank you guys because we we're right now we're 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 trying to absorb as much information as we can, and that's why we need the 420 community help. We right. need you guys in the the social sites chattering so we can look at this chatter, analyze it, break it down, and see where we need to go. We realize that they all get paychecks. Right. And, and and so th there Signed is by a us. funnel. Yes, Signed by us funnel. mostly. Um, but you know, if you have anyone that that would like to come down anonymously, and and uh, do some observing at the film festival that's here in Denver, um, feel free and just have, just tell them. Uh, Reverend Patrick Partridge said to come in, and we don't have to exchange names or anything. I don't know who it is. And uh, let you guys uh, find out what we're about, what yes, we're going to do, you yeah. know, because uh, we're, we're thinking way outside the box. We don't have concert $20 T-shirt events, yeah. you know. You'll we, start seeing more anonymous masks there, I'm sure. Well, I just, I don't, I don't, I don't, I ask that you not protest my, my event. Oh, no, no, I, I, I encourage, like I encourage every one uh, of you to come out. It's just a show of support for each other to, to let them identify with each other and, uh, Amen. and show that they are making a difference. It's nothing protesting you. It's the other way around. Absolutely. We're protesting Thank you. them. Thank you very much. Right and on. like I said, you guys are more than welcome to show up at the Cannabis Revival Film Festival. April also, 16th through the 18th at 
Castleman's in Denver, Colorado on 26th and Walnut. And also on 420, iCannabis Radio is putting on a concert for uh, with No One Left Standing, who are big supporters of um, of Anonymous and um, of cannabis, of course, and marijuana. Um, so, yeah, if Anon wants to show up there, just let, yeah, show up. <laughs> Um, so yeah, thank you Enon for being on the show uh, and giving us all this information. I'm going to put this out there as soon as I can. Um, and yeah, we'll get back with you soon too, around 420. It's been my pleasure and we're here to help. All right. That's Enon from Anonymous. This is Chris from iCannabis.